Navdak takes swift action, recalls toxic cough syrup to safeguard Nigerians. Business mogul Angote says energy price cut pushing Nigeria's inflation figures down. Actors Guild of Nigeria holds movies featuring boat rides following the tragic death of actor Junior Pope. On the foreign scene, Pakistani truck crash claims 17 lives and leaves 41 injured. Compliments of the season. Good afternoon and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I'm Abdullahi Ahmed. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, has recalled Benelin pediatric syrup manufactured by Johnson & Johnson following recent toxicity findings in the laboratory on the product. NAFDAC says laboratory analysis conducted on the product shows that it contains an unacceptable high level of diethylene glycol and was found to cause acute oral toxicity in laboratory animals. Now, the agency disclosed this on its website on Wednesday. NAFDAC says it has directed the marketing authorization holder of Benelin Pediatric Syrup to initiate the recall of the batch, adding that the notice will also be uploaded to the World Health Organization's surveillance and monitoring system. The details of the product shows that the product is manufactured by Johnson & Johnson in Cape Town, South Africa. Operatives of the Ondo State Security Network Agency, also known as Amotekun Corps, have apprehended 45 individuals for allegedly committing various offenses, including dangerous driving, burglary, anti-grazing activities, destruction of public peace, and buying stolen goods. The commander of the Amotekun Corps, Adetunji Adele, disclosed this while parading the suspects on Wednesday at the headquarters of the Corps in Akure. However, he however mentioned that Governor Loki Aedatiwa had directed that 28 of the suspects be released to their families as they were first-time offenders. Adele further stated that the Corps had rounded up 45 suspected criminals from the 18 local government areas of the state for a range of offenses. Among the suspects, there were 14 individuals accused of kidnapping, one dangerous driver, five burglary cases, two anti-grazing suspects, as well as four individuals arrested for charges related to public peace, disruption, theft, and purchasing stolen goods. Elsewhere on Monday this week, three individuals, including a woman, were tragically killed while traveling from Sukundi to Okari areas of Taraba State by suspected gunmen. Two others who sustained injuries during the attack managed to escape and are receiving medical treatment at the Federal University Teaching Hospital in Wukari. According to a survivor, the attackers ambushed the victims who were riding motorcycles from Sukundi to Wukari for a family meeting. After killing the deceased, the gunmen fled the scene with two of the motorcycles belonging to the victims headed towards an unknown destination. Josiah Ru, the member representing Wukari II in the Taraba State House of Assembly, urge both the state and local government authorities to implement sustainable measures to end the frequent killings in the area, as well as the communal clashes between the Jukun and Tif communities. As at the time of filing the support, the acting public relations officer in Tarabo State, ASP James Lashengweng, stated that he was unaware and has yet to get details of the incident from the divisional police officer in Wukari. Elsewhere, Oyo State Governor Shei Makinde has urged Nigerians to embrace the virtues of peace, tolerance and discipline which are among the lessons learned from the holy month of Ramadan. The governor made this call at his residence in Ibadan shortly after hosting a delegation of the Muslim community in the state who had come to felicitate with the governor on the occasion of the Eid al-Fitr celebrations. Furthermore, the governor appealed for peace regarding the controversy surrounding the Ibadan succession plan following the passing of the late Olubadan of Ibadan land, Obama Mahoud, Mahoud or Lalekon Balogun. The governor assured that every effort would be made to uphold peace and tranquility in Ibadan. It's discipline. Because for that 30 days, 
we discipline our body, even though our body may be uh, seeking for uh, nutrients for food, but we say no, we have to uh, discipline the body. So it's a lesson that we have to imbibe in our uh, daily uh, uh, lives. And uh, uh, we should use this uh, experience in uh, about how to eat today, all tendencies. People that uh, eat at all, maybe we had uh, differences. We're all together, we're all united uh, now. And in other news, contrary to what the Kaduna State Police Command stated, members of the Shiite movement in the state say seven of their members were killed, 21 arrested, and many hospitalized during their procession that turned violent in Kaduna State. The chairman of the Resource Forum of the Islamic Movement, Abdullah Al-Ladi, disclosed it at a press conference in Kaduna State. Professor Aladi, who expressed disappointment that security operatives attacked peaceful protesters who were armless, also wondered why security agents exerted their power on peaceful protesters while kidnappers and bandits continued to operate freely in the country. This year's International Coast Day was marked globally as usual on Friday, 5th April 2024. The well organized peaceful demonstrations staged by an armed and armed men, women and children, and even the physically challenged was conducted to commiserate with the Palestinians and condemn the genocide being perpetrated by Israel in Gaza. The police, however, with full combatant, combat ready force came in, in tens of vehicles carrying heavy arms and clamped down on the peaceful demonstrators. The movement, which has threatened legal action, demands that perpetrators be identified and punished accordingly. We are considering the situation. Certainly, we will not just end up, uh, if nothing is done, certainly we will take legal actions and try to pursue this into the latter, so that these criminals must be brought to book. Recall that the police public relations officer in Kaduna ASP Mansur Hassan, who had earlier debunked allegations that personnel of the force killed members of the IMN, also insisted that no live ammunition was used to disperse the protesters, but however confirmed that three personnel were injured and taken to hospital for treatment. Bedle Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. And in other news, the cut in the price of diesel by the Dangote refinery will reduce inflation, according to the president of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote. In February, the headline inflation rate increased by 31.7% relative to the January 2024 rate, which, has, which was at 29%, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Dangote spoke to reporters after praying the Eid prayers and paying homage to the president, Bolatinibu at his Lagos residence. Well, there's quite a lot of improvement because if you look at it here, one of the major issues that we've had was the, uh, you know, the Naira devaluation that was actually, that has gone very aggressive up to about 1,900. But right now we're back to almost 1,250, 1,300, which is a good, uh, you know, reprieve. And uh, you can see quite a lot of uh, things have actually gone. Even people now, when you go to the market, for example, uh, something that will produce locally, like uh, a four or whatever, people will charge you more. Why? Because they are paying very high prices on diesel. And what we did, for example, in our refinery, we started selling even diesel at about 1,200 for 1,650. And I'm sure, you know, as we go along, things will continue to uh, improve quite a lot. Now, the minority caucus in the House of Representatives has called on Nigerians to embrace the spirit of tolerance, sacrifice, and peaceful coexistence as they join other Muslims to celebrate this year's Eid al-Fitr. In a statement issued on Thursday and signed by Kingsley Chinda, the minority leader of the House, who also chairs the caucus, the lawmakers elected on the platform of the minority parties urged Muslims across the country to use the Eid festivities as an opportunity to demonstrate love towards one another in the interest of peace and national cohesion. The caucus encourages Muslims to continue exhibiting the values of tolerance, forgiveness, self-sacrifice, mutual love, 
and good neighborliness as exemplified by the Holy Prophet. Now, the group also expressed hope that this occasion would enable faithful to continue praying for the unity, peace, and progress of the country, especially considering the numerous challenges faced by millions of Nigerians, including the rise in poverty, hunger, and widespread killings, abductions, kidnappings, and the overall state of insecurity across the nation. Staying with the Eid festivities, Muslims celebrating Eid in the Federal Capital Territory have called on the government to look into the current economic climate in the country with a goal to ease in the hardship currently faced by millions of Nigerians. A cross-section of residents who spoke to Trust TV News during a visit to a recreational park in the nation's capital for the Eid celebration reflects the mood of the country. From here to last year, actually, you know, this day, Saturday, today, you see the, plenty, the people are not plenty yet. They are yet to come because it is the evening time. And uh, it's, I can say this year is, will be more wonderful than the last year, actually. Alhamdulillah, we thank God for everything. Only that uh, everybody knows the situation in the country. It's not as it used to be. The economy is not like before. So everything is almost everywhere, everything is, is expensive. Alhamdulillah, despite the hardship and all that, we are struggling to eat and all that. So there is nothing to say about Alhamdulillah. But things actually are not easy. Things are not easy, not at all. Because you will find a person that do take three square meal last year, but this year you cannot be able to do that. During the fasting period, you see that a person may break the fast with only water. So actually things are very hard, but we are calling on the government to try as much as they can to bring out policies to cushion or to subsidize, to, to bring a kind of relief to the masses. This year I don't really enjoy it, but I enjoy it last year because I'm new in Abuja and I don't have any family except my parents and my siblings. But last day now, it's going to be fun, it can take you anywhere, but this Abuja, too much I expect. Yeah. So I prefer last year than this year because last year some things are still cheaper than this year. Last year this place was full to the brim. But this year you can see how scanty the place is. The, there's no doubt about the fact that that is given. So it is actually owing to the harsh economic situation, which uh, almost everybody is, is, is feeling it harsh. And so, but however is it, we give glory to the Almighty Allah. Right now, the Emir of Kefi, Shehu Chindo Yunusa III, has called on the federal government to support farmers, invest in education, and also support the private sector to ensure development of the country. The AMA made the call in this year's Idil al Fitil message shortly after the Durba in commemoration of the 2024 Idil al Fitil Salah celebration. Noel Samson has more. <laughs> The Doba Festival is an ancient, traditional, annual Hausa, cultural, religious, and equestrian festival celebrated as a core part of the Ariwa Hausa culture. Doba, which has existed for centuries, is an essential part of the Hausa kingdom and is also used to mark the end of Ramadan. The Emir of Kefi shortly after the Doba, which is organized to mark the Eid celebration, called for love among Nigerians as it is the only way forward for the nation. I would like to draw the attention of all of us in the country that we must love one another. We must be ready to support one another. If we are ready to do that, we will lessen the burden on the government and then everybody will be engaged in love and protection of individuals. When you refuse to support your neighbor, your neighbor will also take his face away from your area where there is potential danger, he will not draw your attention. So we must be supportive to each other and we must love, we must love each other. He also appealed to the federal government to support farmers, private sector, as well as agencies responsible for the security of the country. The subsidy should go to farmers so that it will encourage them and farm a lot of food for the country and other countries around us. The government cannot do it alone by giving our children work in various offices 
they must support the private sector. They must relax some laws with the private sector to expand so that the, the, the expansion will support by bringing employment opportunities to our graduates. And also, I would like to draw the attention of the government on security. Security is not one man's assignment, it's everybody's assignment. And this can only be done through supporting institutions. This joyous festival marks the end of Ramadan, a month of fasting, spiritual reflection, and devotion. From Kefi in Nasara State, Noel well, Samson, Trust TV News. We are watching the news update on Trust TV. Still to come, more calls for peace and national development as an emir appeals to farmers and herders to work together. Details of this and many more stories up ahead in just a moment. Welcome back to the news. Let's take another look at our top stories. NAVDAC takes swift action recalling toxic cough syrup to safeguard Nigerians. And business mogul Ali Kotangote says energy price cut pushing down Nigeria's inflation figures. Now, the Actors Guild of Nigeria has halted oil field productions involving river Rhine areas and boat rides following the tragic boat accident that claimed the life of Nollywood actor Junior Pope and three other crew members. Ejezi Rolas, the Guild's president, revealed this in a circular dated April 11, 2024, which was posted on social media on Thursday. In addition to suspending such film productions, the Guild has also prohibited actors from participating in any film produced by Adama Luke until further notice. Luke is the producer of the movie titled The Other Side of Life, in which Junior Pope was starring before his death. Reports emerged on Wednesday that Junior Pope and four other crew members lost their lives in an accident while traveling by both from the film location. Thousands of Muslims in Gombe State on Wednesday joined their counterparts across the world to celebrate this year's Eid al-Fitr. Despite the prevailing economic hardship in the country, some residents in the state say this year's Eid is among the best they have ever experienced. But while residents are reveling in the celebrations, the Emir of Gombe, and on the other hand, has called on herders and farmers across the state to sheath their swords to enable the state achieve long-lasting peace and food security. From Gombe, Hassan Kohli reports. This year's Eid al Fitr came amidst an economic slowdown, which deprived many of the ability to afford their basic necessities. However, in the midst of the downtown, most of the youth here describe this year's Salah celebration as one of the best compared to previous ones. We are celebrating this year's Eid in peace and harmony. We are praying that Allah will accept our deeds and we wish every Muslim faithful Eid Mubarak. We are happy because this Salah is the best. We are wearing new clothes and there was no disappointment from tailors. We are really happy and wishing Muslims Eid Mubarak. We are happy and healthy, and we must thank Allah for that. However, we are experiencing difficulties here and there. As a person, I could not even afford new clothes for Salah. Even if I get the public, the cost of sewing is 3,000 naira, which I cannot afford. After observing two rakat of Eid, laid by Imam Ali Wahammari, the Emir of Gombe, Abu Bakr Shehu Abu Bakr the Tat, urged faithful to embrace farming to become self-reliant and ensure the state achieved food security. The Emir, who called on farmers and herders to avoid fighting each other, noted the rainy season when farming activities usually fix is by the corner. He sued for unity among the people of Gombe state. <laughs> Farmers and herders should live in peace and harmony. I am using this Salah to call on all to be law abiding, unite and embrace peace for prosperity of the state and Nigeria at large. 
In his Salah message, the state governor, Muhammadu Inwe Ahaya, through his deputy, called for peace and unity, urging Muslims to sustain Bacha's land during the holy month of Ramadan. The Eid Freya was attended by the Emir of Gombe, the Gombe state governor, and other dignitaries. <laughs> Hassan Kohli, Trust TV News, Bombay. In other news, the family of the late former chairman of the Nigeria Exchange Group, Abimbola Ogubanjo, who was killed in a Southern California helicopter crash in February this year, on Wednesday filed a lawsuit against the U.S. helicopter company. The former chief executive uh, officer of Access Holding, Herbert Wigwe, his wife and son were also on board the ill-fated helicopter. The Ogumbanjo family stated that the flight should have been grounded because of the treacherous weather condition. In February, Wigwe, his wife and his son died following a helicopter crash in California near the Nevada border in the United States of America. Relatives of Ogumbanjo in the court filing on Wednesday claimed that the charter company, Orbic Air, improperly flew the helicopter despite, quote, a wintry mix of snowy and rainy conditions in the Mojave Desert, where the, gra where the crash occurred on February 9. One of the attorneys who filed the lawsuit, Andrew C. Robb, noted that Ogubanjo's family is seeking answers and accountability. Staying with developments on the international scene, at least 17 religious pilgrims were killed and 41 others injured in a crash as they traveled to a shrine in southwestern Pakistan, according to officials on Thursday. The crash happened around 10 p.m. on Wednesday in the Herb district of Balochistan province. District Deputy Commissioner Munir Ahmed said confirmed the death toll as well as number of injured. He said the truck, which was overspeeding, went out of the driver's control while negotiating a turn and fell into a ravine as they approached the shrine. Shaukat Jalbani, the deputy medical superintendent of the Herb's main hospital, also confirmed 17 people had been killed and said most of the injured had been sent to the nearby Karachi city for treatment. Road accidents with high fatalities are common in Pakistan, where safety measures are lax, driver training is poor, and transport infrastructure often decrepit. Now, in January of 2023, 41 people were killed when their passenger bus, which was also loaded with containers of flammable oil, plunged into a ravine in Balochistan province, bursting into flames. Talking sports now, Al Nasser striker Cristiano Ronaldo is facing a fresh ban and fine after being sent off against Al Hilal. The 38 year old was shown a straight red card during the Saudi Super Cup semi-final defeat after he appeared to throw his elbow at Ali Al Bulahi. Bulahi. Now, Ronaldo lost his temper and was dismissed with four minutes left on the clock. Reports say the former Real Madrid and Manchester United superstar could be handed a two-match suspension and forced to pay a fine of 20,000 rials. After an overall disappointing out outing in the Saudi Super Cup, Ronaldo on Wednesday took to Instagram to share a message on his story that read, love and attitude is the perfect gratitude. In other sports news, World Rugby is considering the use of a smaller ball in the women's game. The global governing body is collecting training and playing data on the size of 4.5 ball uh, which is about 3% smaller and 3.4 or 3.4% lighter uh, than the size 5 ball. Lindsay Stotling, the science and medical manager at World Rugby, says typically an adult hand is 10% larger than that of an adult female hand. Uh, well, the World Rugby confirmed that plain data was gathering at, was gathered rather at the women's under 18s Six Nations, where size played with a size 4.5 ball this month, while training data was also gathered from three Celtic uh, challenge size. Stalin 
said the smaller ball would be in better proportion to the female athlete's hands and could result, quote, in numerous positive benefits. All right, that's it. You're up to date with the latest news stories at this hour. We'll be back with more a little later. For now, follow us across our social media platforms to stay in touch with our content. You can also visit our website, trusttv.com, for the latest news and documentaries. My name is Abdullah Ahmed. Thank you for your time.